Hello, I'm Dr. Helga finfalzen Pizio. Welcome back to my video blog. Today's subject are four refractive conditions that we address as cataract surgeons for patients undergoing surgery. Nearsightedness describes people who have trouble seeing distance and they're able to read very well up close, hence the word nearsighted. So patients typically will wear glasses for driving and watching television, but do not require any kind of reading uh, uh, glasses or contact lenses for their near vision. A farsighted person is someone who probably when they were younger had excellent distance and near vision but as we hit our 40s and 50s uh, are unable to do reading without having to wear over-the-counter reading glasses or prescription glasses. That's called farsightedness. There's a condition called presbyopia which is a problem with that focusing ability. The act of focusing ability is called accommodation and it's what allows us to see both distance and up close when we're younger and as we hit our 40s and 50s that ability goes away. That's called presbyopia. Astigmatism describes the curve on the front of the eye. The clear windshield of the eye is called the cornea. When the cornea is round in all directions, like a basketball, there's very low or no astigmatism. If there is astigmatism, the cornea, instead of being in oval, uh, a round shape, is more of an oval shape, like a football. It has a longer curve in one direction and a sharper curve in the other direction. Astigmatism makes things blurry because the image is, is essentially warped. Therefore, the correction for astigmatism usually is with glasses or contact lenses. When we are addressing astigmatism in cataract surgery, there are ways to correct this condition for the sharpest vision without having to wear glasses or contact lenses. So in summary, our four conditions uh, that are refractive conditions we need to address at the time of cataract surgery are nearsightedness, farsightedness, presbyopia, or the loss of accommodation, and astigmatism. In my future blogs, I plan to review these conditions and how this can be corrected at the time of cataract surgery. Thank you, and I'll see you on my next video blog.